everyone. So in this video, I'm going to solve this circuit, including an ideal transformer in order to find I1, I2, V1 and V2. And also I'm looking for the average power absorbed by each of these um, resistors that you can see in this circuit. So in order to find the average power, clearly I should have the current passing through them or the voltage um, across them. So having I1, I2, V1 and V2 being calculated first will help us doing that. So I have four unknowns, which are V1, V2, I1, and I2. So clearly I need four different equations because I have four unknowns, and then I can solve them and find these four um, unknown variables. So the first thing about the ideal transformers, I can use their specifications in order to find the relationship between the voltages and also the currents. So the first thing is the relationship between the voltages. And I know that in the ideal transformers, we have V2 over V1 it is going to be equal to N2 over N1. And the sign for the sign, we will look at the dot uh, at the dots at each side of the transformer. So we can see that the voltages V1 and V2 are both positive at the dotted terminal of the coils, right? So we're going to have a positive sign over here. And N2 is equal to 4, and this is 1. So one of my equations would be V2 minus 4, V1 is equal to 0. So this will be one of my equations. The second equation is the, equa the relationship between the currents, the ratio of the currents. So I know that we have I2 over I1 that is equal to 1, uh, or let me write it this way. So we have N1 over N2. And then for the sign, I can see that my current I1 is entering the dotted node and I2 is leaving the dotted node. So we're going to have a positive sign over here, and that would be 1 over 4. So from here, I can have I1 minus 4 I2 is equal to 0. Okay? I'm going to write it this way. It doesn't matter. I just want to be consistent of what I have in math. All right. So this is my other equation. Then I need two more equations. So I can write KVL in these two loops that I have, loop number one, which I have I1 in it. So this is my loop number one and loop number two. I write it here. Uh, I wrote this loop one and loop two here. So you know um, when I'm talking about loop one, where I'm talking about. All right, so now I'm gonna write a KVL at loop one. So KVL at loop one, will be Vs, and then we have Vs over here. It is 165 sine of 1000 T, so it is 165 with the angle of zero. So I can write this as 165 is gonna be equal to 10 I1 plus V1 plus 12, multiplied by I1 minus I2. And then if I simplify that, I'm gonna have 32 I1 minus 12i2, actually 22 here, sorry, it's 10 plus 12. So 22i1 minus 12i2 plus v1 is equal to 165. So this is going to be my third equation. And then my fourth equation will be the equation, the KVL at loop 2. So at loop 2, you see that we have minus V2 plus 20I2 plus 12I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. So here I'm going to have 22I2 minus 12I1 minus V2 is equal to 0. So now I have four equations and four unknowns. So I can set up the matrix for these four equations and then use MATLAB in order to solve for my I1, I2, V1, and V2. It's not necessary to use MATLAB, but here since the numbers are a little getting like um, complicated, that's why we'll use MATLAB. So my matrix clearly will be a four by four matrix as my A, 
then I'm going to have my variables over here, my unknowns. So I have I1, I2, I3, and I4, uh, sorry, V1 and V2. So that is my X, and that is equal to my matrix B. So I'm going to transfer all four equations into this matrix format. So if this is my equation one, equation two, equation three, and equation four. So equation one, I have V2 minus four V1. So I don't have any I1, I don't have any I2. I have minus four V1 and one V2 is equal to zero. Equation number two, I have minus one I1 plus four I2. And then I don't have any Vs over here. Equation number three, I have 22I1 minus 12I2, 1V1 and 0V2 is equal to 165. And then minus 12I1, 22I2, 0 and minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so I use MATLAB in order to find I1, I2, V1, and V2. And these are the results that I got. So I got 9.1667 amps for I1. I got 2.2917 amps for I2. V1 is minus 9.1667 volts and V2 minus 36.667 volts. So I found I1, I2, V1, and V2. Now I can easily figure out the power, uh, the average power being absorbed by each of the resistors, right? So let's first start with the resistor of 10 ohm. So you can see clearly that the current passing through this 10 ohm resistor is I1, right? So then my average power for the 10 ohm will be P of 10 is going to be half the current passing through that resistor which is i1 squared multiplied by the resistance so that would be half multiplied by i1 is 9.1667 squared multiplied by 10 and that would give us 420.14 watts then the power through the 20 ohm resistor so we can see the current passing through the 20 ohm resistor is I2. So P of 20 is going to be half I2 squared multiplied by R. And that would be half. I2 is 2.2917 squared multiplied by 20 and that would give us 52.51 watts and then the last one will be the power in the 12 ohm resistor so note that the current passing through this resistor is i1 minus i2 right and it doesn't matter if you write it as i2 minus i1 or i1 minus i2 because in um, calculating the power we're going to have we're going to square it anyway so the negative sign doesn't matter here. So that would be half I1 minus I2 squared multiplied by 12. And that would give us 283.59 watts. All right. So I hope you understood this question, question for um, the ideal transformers. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.